Good morning, Hilton Baptist. It's Friday the 2nd of October, and I just wanted to give you a preview of what's coming up this Sunday as we continue our series through the post-exilic prophets and writers to learn lessons from the people of Israel coming out of exile as we come out of lockdown. This week, it's the prophet Malachi. And he is a really interesting prophet with some very interesting lessons to teach us. He was the last prophet of the Old Testament. His book is the last book in the Old Testament. And essentially, it's made up of five statements that God makes, which are challenged and questioned by the people of Israel. The first statement is, I, ha I love you. And the people say, well, how have you loved us? They didn't feel very loved. The second statement is, uh, the priests show contempt for my name. And the priests challenge that and say, how have we shown contempt for your name? Thirdly, you have wearied the Lord with your words, says the Lord to the people. And they deny that. They say, how have we wearied, wearied you? We haven't done that. Fourthly, return to me, says the Lord, and I will return to you. And they say, well, how? How can we return to you? And then lastly, the Lord says, you've spoken arrogantly towards me. And the people of Israel deny that. And it's a challenging book because there are some hard lessons that we need to learn. But we're going to focus on most of those lessons on Sunday and particularly how to return to the Lord. Because I think it's true that we can all get a little bit lost during the lockdown and, and kind of forget how it is we can get our relationship with God back on track. But just for today, I want to focus for a minute on this first word that God speaks where he says, I love you. And the people of Israel, they don't understand that. They say, how have you loved us? Because they don't feel very loved. And Malachi's answer is interesting, or God's answer through Malachi is interesting, because God basically says, well, I've always loved you. I chose you. That's why I love you. I didn't choose the Edomites. I didn't choose Esau. I chose Jacob. I chose you. I love you. I've always loved you. And that's all he says. And my guess is that they were all a bit disappointed. They said, well, we don't feel very loved, I suspect. And, and sometimes we don't feel very loved by the Lord, do we? And we want God to do something in our lives that makes us feel loved. We want to feel loved. And that's a natural thing and not a bad thing in and of itself. But if love is all about feeling, then I think it's quite shallow. They say that romantic love, that love that Hollywood speaks about, that love where you feel something in your heart that you just can't get away from and you have to act on, that that love lasts for no more than two years. And that a, a good marriage might start with those feelings for another person, but they certainly don't end there. You can't make a marriage work just on feelings. And so I think the Lord is saying to us is... You can't maintain your relationship with God properly if he's always got to prove his love for you so that you feel loved. Rather, we've got to remember what true love is and how God truly loves us. And so how does God truly love us? Well, he chose us. He chose us before the creation of the world. He chose us because he loves us. Deuteronomy says, I chose you, people of Israel, not because you were great, not because you were wonderful, not because you were impressive, because you weren't any of those things. I chose you because I loved you and I still love you. And I think God has demonstrated his love in multiple ways because he sacrificed everything for us, even though we actually didn't make a very good commitment to him and uh, Malachi is going to show that the commitment that they were making to the Lord was shoddy at best. And often our commitment to him is shoddy at best. But he still loves us. Why? Because he chose us. Because he continues to want to love us and will always love us. And he demonstrated his love for us by sending his son to sacrifice even his life for us. That we might be able to be loved by God going forward. And so think about that. God loves you and will never stop loving you. Don't forget that he always loves you. Can I remind you that we start at nine o'clock on Sunday morning 
and we're not going to be live streaming the service. There are at least 100 seats available to you on Sunday. That's more than enough space, I think, for everybody who wants to come. And we will record the service and we will put it up on our YouTube channel after the service. But from this Sunday onwards, no live streaming. That'll de-stress a whole lot of people and make life a lot easier. And we really want to encourage you to come. So come along and uh, let's worship the Lord together. The Lord who loves us and has always loved us and will never stop loving us.